winning isn't everything look for opportunities to move others forward and, and promote what they're doing if they earn it and get them in the right situation uh, for them to uh, become the next generation of leaders. You're tuned in to the Breaking Red podcast, the show for rising military leaders who want to trailblaze the future. We tackle the profession of arms with creative solutions to dynamic issues. This isn't your typical leadership course, so be ready to step up your game and define the future. I am your host, Gabriel Gabe Rockavilla. Let's go. Welcome back, everybody. Gabe Brock on the Miz and Microphone again, episode 15, uh, moving forward. Looking, feeling good, looking good, feeling good. Uh, here in November, happy to report the CrossFit Open is over, and I finished that whole thing. Um, it was fun. Um, it was a great uh, vibe and energy throughout the entire uh, five Fridays that uh, I participated in the workouts with everybody. Uh, when, as I... The competition kept on going and it was over. It's always friendly competition because that's essential in CrossFit. But there was a time where, you know, we were done and I had my scores and I turned them in. I didn't really care why I was uh, my, my standing. But another another athlete, Will, he was like, man, I'm happy I beat, finally beat you with something. I was like, what do you? And then my reaction was like, what are you talking about? I expected you to beat me. You beat me all the time in a bunch of stuff. And uh, um, like any kind of CrossFit workout, there's ups and downs. Sometimes you're really good at things. Sometimes you're not. It was just a, it was a funny interaction to me where he was like, "Yeah, hey, I finally won," and where I expected him to win anyway. And I also was thinking about uh, you know the Air Force mission is to fly, fight, win. I started to think about is winning everything. And a couple things happened this week that I want to share and get, offer my thoughts and advice to you um, as far as is winning everything. So two days ago, uh, I, we have our shift change happening at work, and. You know, uh, we're taking over from the night crew, and um, I overheard. So it's a normal shift change where we're going over the log. Here's some work that was done over the nights. Here's, and we're just uh, passing on exactly what the day crew, our crew, needs to be doing. And I heard within like two minutes, there was this the this task needed to happen, and then they're like, "Yeah, this this uh, X Y Z was supposed to happen." And then the on crewing day oncoming day crew was like, "No, that's not how it was supposed to work. I I left clear instructions about what to do." And then it started going into like their voices started getting higher and higher. I was like, what the hell is going on? And so what I what I heard was just arguing, arguing, arguing. And it was really when I uh, kept on listening and just the uh, I got I understood what the core of the argument was. The core of the argument was that they were uh, unclear on their assigned roles or responsibilities. But for whatever odd reason, they started to take it out on each other and trying to win the argument. They tried to say, no, I'm right and you are wrong. Ignoring the core of the argument, they just wanted to uh, win an argument. So um, almost to the point where I don't think they were, they were bringing up petty stuff. It, it reminded me of... Uh, Kevin Hart, one of his uh, stand-up comedies, is like you know when he's arguing with his wife or girl, whatever it is, and you don't want he didn't want to get to the point where he he was going to be wrong, so he always wants to end the argument with, uh, by winning something. He's like, well, why why is the microphone or why is the microwave always on high? Like that has nothing to do with the actual discussion. Yet you want to end the conversation on something because you want to just win. And uh, um, I myself. I'm I'm really bad about that, and I've I've gotten better. I hope I've gotten better anyway. You have to ask Gene if I'm I'm better about that. As far as not wanting to win an argument, it's it's understanding and just bringing up something to just win, and not be wrong. That that's what uh, the problem I have, and uh, that's what I recognize was happening in the discussion at work. So, the reason why I want to talk about it is because this this is core to. Uh, Problems and issues that you could probably avoid at work, and you may not even recognize it. When you see, when you hear arguments, a lot of times the arguments will just between two people of the same team. What you're seeing is people going into self defense mode because they don't want to admit they were wrong about something, and really they don't want to be shamed or oh man, I made a mistake. They just want to be no, uh, I'm right, and I'm going to keep on saying I'm right and argue with you. And both sides are probably going to try and win the argument, and you can sense when. Um, it evolves or maybe devolves from the point of what are we, what is the actual core of what's wrong? Maybe the, the, the process is not uh, clearly understood. Maybe there was a, a genuine mistake of, no, I actually thought the, uh, I was supposed to do the task like this, yet you're telling me that uh, the actual understood place 
piece was, no, it was supposed to be done over here in this method. And it's just a simple mistake. You can you can uh, um, overcome that. But, like, but it, what, it, what it comes down to is you actually have to recognize that you made a mistake. You have to come from a humble position of like, I am sorry, and just admit that you were wrong. But that's very, very hard for some people to do because we don't want to be embarrassed. And we want we don't want to be embarrassed. And if you in a if you kind of exude a thing where I want to win everything and always be right, you never can find space to grow because that means you're not making mistakes and mistakes are just common for everybody. And to try and avoid those uh, puts you in a position to where you're not going to be able to you're going to actually create more problems if you always are trying to win everything. So a recommended approach for me in this instance was be like, I, when I, when I uh, talked to talk to one of the people in the conversations, I said, maybe you want to approach the conversations, ask like what you can do. In other words, don't try and seek to change someone else, seek to change yourself. Like what kind of take from a humble position, be like, okay, from this situation, how can I make this better for you? So another, and I think that'll disarm the entire conversation to where they're not, uh, you're, you're no longer trying to win. You're actually getting down to the core of, okay, so here's what is the, I did something wrong. What can I do something to make this right? If you can, but it, it's sometimes it's very emotional that you can't get to that point. And so you have to work on those pieces and recognize when the, when the situation devolves into just an argument trying to win something. Uh, because it's not about winning. It should be about eliminating confusion it should be about moving forward together and uh, clearing up any misunderstandings and moving forward. Um, a lot of times, especially in, in these kind of arguments, if the other person feels like they lost, that has you know second and third order effects of now the, the, the relationship could be a little bit damaged to where somewhere down the road, uh, there could be a thing of, well, now I'm just going to undercut this guy because I lost to him or her. And you don't want that kind of uh, mentality on your team. If neither side is interested in taking the credit, then I believe the right answer will be understood and you both can move on. And so again, it's not always about winning. It, it, sometimes it's about moving forward. Second time, uh, second um, topic I want to talk about is I pose this question within the officer mentorship form. If you are a sitting squatch commander, you should not submit yourself for individual annual awards. As an example, me as a commander of a cyber officer, in a cyber squadron, I did not compete myself for the information dominance FGO of the year award, uh, the R functional award. Changed my mind. Uh, I, I, and I, uh, there was a large amount of uh, responses. I got 42 comments and 37 reactions. And it was just the thing of, I, I posed the question on purpose because I wanted to see what, if my opinion was uh, right or wrong, if anybody uh, um, disagreed, agreed. Overwhelmingly, everyone agreed with me. And uh, uh, we started getting into the nuances of the, the specific words that I use within the sentence. So I did say self-nominating. Yeah, you should not submit yourself for individual annual awards. So that is self-nominating. And uh, some of the discussion was talking about you should not, and everyone was like, yeah, you should nominate yourself. If your boss nominates you, that's one thing, but you should nominate yourself. So that's, that's a clear answer that everyone agreed upon. But as far as nominating yourself, there's some, I think, it gets down to even just the action of, it, of you trying to do that. How is that going to be perceived? And especially if you have another FGO in your squadron. So sometimes you could be a lieutenant colonel and you can have a major as your DO. So I had that situation in my last command. At no point in time did I uh, nominate myself for any awards. And we, I deliberately was grooming uh, the DO, both DOs, to try and win awards, which they did. One of them won like a – Mark Aurelia won like a pac half level award. I've never won anything that high, and he won it. Um, the idea was that no, this is a great opportunity for you to uh, to get another you know notch in your belt or whatever you want to call it. Is like yeah, this is a great award for you to get uh, to compete for a squadron command and just be uh, and you earned it. That's the key part. You earned it, so let's set you up for success. And did I have the same opportunity? Yes, but I took myself out of the running because that's not appropriate. I'm already this. I'm already a sitting squadron commander. I don't need to win those kind of awards. However, and so we we started talking about that in the forum. But then we also knew of people who submitted themselves. And you kind of see it, and you're like, did you submit yourself or did your boss submit you? And you kind of look around that uh, um, some people were sharing the stories of like, no, 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 they, self, they, they were uh, um, self-nominating. And we all agreed that that was the wrong thing to do. And it seems kind of, this is basically a dick move. It's like, you don't do that. Like, that's, a, that's not a good move from a leader. 
So I was happy to bring up the topic within the forum because I wanted, uh, you know, the forum is for you, new new officers and uh, uh, more experienced or even retired officers in there. I wanted to make sure that people always thought that was like the, yeah, I thought this was the understood code, yet why do we all know about exceptions to this code? So uh, bringing up topics like this is important to just have the general conversation of like uh, going along with the theme about is winning everything. No, it's not. If you're a sitting commander, you should not try and win an award that could be better served for somebody else to advance their career. Leadership leaders are in those positions to recognize others, not themselves. And so, you know, if again, if your boss recommends you and you can have a conversation, if that's the right action to do, um, just because you're in a position to win doesn't necessarily it's going to have the right effect for the overall team. And so just got to be cognizant of those actions. But in general, uh, I will say if you're a sitting squadron commander, you don't get to do not nominate yourselves for awards. If your boss uh, wants to nominate you, that's one thing. And you really should have a, a conversation because potentially there is a situation where it makes sense. But in general, don't nominate yourself. The the where you could take credit is potentially the unit award where the entire I was, you know, I was proud when uh, our squadron won back to back um, uh, numbered Air Force large squadron of the year. So that was a really uh, awesome uh, achievement. And I was very proud to put that in my OPR. And we, we it was a team award. But at, at no point in time was I trying to push myself and uh, organize myself to get a individual award that, that that's not a good sign of a leader. So winning isn't everything look for opportunities to move others forward and and promote what they're doing if they earn it and get them in the right situation uh, for them to uh, become the next generation of leaders. So uh, speaking of winning, um, gonna run like an interesting uh, contest here. And so a lot of times where I'm reading more and more about like uh, how to market and make your podcast uh, more popular or get more people to listen to it, I go, I actually have internal struggles of, am I doing this to become more popular, gain more listeners and um, of that sort? Or am I just trying to put out positive energy in the world because I just want to put out positive energy? And so um, I don't necessarily follow all of the the recognized marketing tactics, but in this instance, I think I have a better shot of a better method of doing it. So, what I'm going to do is, um, I like to get uh, the crowd into and listeners into just uh, increasing my rating and reviews through iTunes and Apple Podcasts. So, um, through 28 November, Thanksgiving, I'm going to if you leave a rating and review in iTunes and you use the hashtag uh, within the comment, you use hashtag DBAA. I'll pick a random winner. And for that winner, I'm going to do a $50 donation of their choosing. So you're going to win, but you specifically don't win anything. You get to pick a family or an organization or, or some kind of thing during the holidays where you think $50 could be spent best. Um, a lot of times uh, when, when you run these argument, or arguments, when you run these contests, you can uh, um, it's going to be a $50 gift award to you. But nope, you don't win anything. You get to have you get to be put someone else in a position to win and helping them out during the holiday season. Um, uh, I, I did some good stuff last year by raising some money for some, uh, um, I called it an angel family. That was, it was a, a family that I was aware of that needed some things during the holidays. They were kind of um, hard on money and it was, felt really good to do those things. And I want to figure out a way to do another, uh, um, I raised over like a thousand dollars that time. This time I'm only doing $50 shooting kind of lower, but that's okay. So again, uh, through 28 November, if you leave a rating and review on iTunes uh, and uh, use the hashtag DBAA, I will pick a random winner. We'll figure out how you can contact me, and I will make a $50 donation um, in your name uh, to your family or organization of your choice. So, um, again, instead of winning for yourself, help someone else win this holiday season. It's going to close out this episode of Breaking Red. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you next week. Peace. This is Gabe Brock, and thanks for tuning into the Breaking Red podcast. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review so we can improve our work and deliver the best content possible. You can find our community platforms on Facebook and YouTube by searching for Breaking Red podcast. Keep up with weekly content at our website, projectrise.co, and you can find me on Instagram at, at gaybrock01. Like, follow, and share Breaking Red podcast content everywhere possible, both the good and the bad. Join our conversations with other rising military leaders that aren't afraid to break red and learn how to rise to your potential. Thank you.